Cal from <laughs> Napoleon Township is Supervisor Dan Gallagher. Good morning, Dan. Good morning. Good morning, Dan. How are you? It's fun to be here. Yeah. It's like being home. Yeah. First, I want to thank you for arriving so early <laughs> to get a lay of the land. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you probably couldn't sleep with all the election uh, news uh, you were following. But uh, let's let me let's get started with just some general stuff. How are things going out in uh, Napoleon Township? Everything's good. Uh, as we are the 10th safest city in, in uh, all of Michigan. That's right. I yeah. did not know that. It's, That's amazing. It's due to, um, you know, the, uh, it was a timing issue. We had a millage with the fire and the police. Mm -hmm. uh, it was because our building was paid off. Yeah. So the taxes were, uh, people hardly feel it. And, yeah. and now our police and fire have uh, absolutely the best of everything, yeah. uh, right down to the uniform to... Um, you know, tasers and all this kind of yeah. stuff. So we're we're very fortunate to. Is it to be normal? In that. Is it normal for a, a township of of your size for the police and uh, fire to get along as well as they do? A apparently, it's not. <laughs> uh, but our uh, it works because yeah. our our fire chief and our police chief, which I think both have been on the show of a few course, times, yep. uh, they're they're amazing. They're great for our community. They're great for uh, you know. We really appreciate what uh, what they do for us out there at Napoleon Township. The J. Holly Fire Station, no relation. No relation. But that's a I, that. I get that question a lot. Do you? Yeah, he gets that a lot too. <laughs> yeah, he was our fire chief for a long, long time. A lot of uh, uh, people got to uh, got to see this this fire station during the COVID uh, COVID nineteen pandemic because you guys used that as a vaccination hub. And I was amazed at uh, really the the staff there, the fire staff, how um, just courteous, how engaging they were. Um, really, the, the facility speaks for itself. It's beautiful. But um, what's the camaraderie like around that place with having such a beautiful new building um, going into work? Uh, and there's also, you guys have new fire trucks. It seems like it's a good, good time to <laughs> There's be. a lot of stuff going yeah. on uh, in Napoleon Township. We're we're pretty excited about. We just got our fire trucks okay. and um, barely been able to use them at all. Well, that's yet. a good thing. Yeah, that yeah. is a good thing. <laughs> um, the 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 COVID clinics. I think we did over six thousand shots wow. during the uh, pandemic. We, you know, the doors came up. I, I think you got your shot I did. out there, and yeah. you got your shots out yeah. there too. Uh, so you just drove in, you never got out of your car, or they right. gave you the shot right in the car, and boom. And I don't think there was anybody else in Jackson County that did uh, anything even similar to that. Mm -hmm. So we were, we were fortunate to be able yeah. to be in that situation where we could do it yeah. for people. Mm -hmm. People were scared back then. For right? sure. Yeah. Just could put a sign up. I got shot in, you sell shirts. I got shot in Napoleon. Oh, oh man. The I got my shot. The 10th safest got, city in the... <laughs> I got shot in the 10th safest city in in Michigan. I don't think I'm going to do that. No, that would be, no. that would be crazy. <laughs> there was a, a, a vote in uh, Napoleon for a uh, township trustee, and that would be, I think it's for someone to uh, uh, continue a, a, a seat that was uh, an appointment, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Dan Weimer? Yes. Okay. And he, well, he had no opposition. He had none. Uh, what happened uh, during the, the election where I was elected is we had a woman who, I was a trustee, and uh, so my seat had to be filled as I was running for township supervisor. So uh, she won, Heidi Richardson, she won, and then for some reason, she had to move out of our township. Mm -hmm. So um, that left the seat open, and I said to Dan Weimer, and uh, I said, would you please consider uh, me appointing you to trustee? And uh, he came back the next day and he said, I'll do it. And uh, thank God, because he is, he is Mr. Napoleon out That's there awesome. to us. So he's been a huge help to me. That's awesome. Totally appreciate him. How about the, uh, the 911 uh, proposal? That's an it's interesting sad. one, right? That, yeah. uh, we talk, Bart and I talked about it a couple of days ago. There, you know, you could call 911 and no one could answer. You could be on hold and that will remain the same yeah. for now. It was sad. I think the wording on the ballot was a little bit, people were thinking they were going to be charged $3. They were already being assessed on their phone bill, $1.50. Mm -hmm. So we were just asking for another $1.50. Right. Um, I, don't, I don't think 
they're going to have to come back and put yeah. put it on the ballot again soon because we definitely need it. If you've ever called nine one one and uh, been hung up on or been put on hold or something like that, it's uh, it's it's very scary. Yeah, picture, picture yourself in a situation where you're with a loved one laying on the ground and you need to call nine one one and no one's answering. That's what you do in emergent in an emergency. You call nine one one. Well, I think you're right about the crowded ballot, and I don't know why uh, everyone in the state of Michigan votes for, say, the Wayne State trustees. We have no knowledge. I of agree. Those people. I right. agree. What are we doing? Why are yeah. we doing it? I don't know. I don't think. I think that needs to be looked at. Mm -hmm. How many of those Wayne State trustees did you research? None. And the court of appeals and the, the all of it. I mean it's really a it's a lot and it kind of mucks up what you're trying to do locally and I think maybe you saw that a little bit of course that's just presumptuous but you know I don't know so that'll go back to the that'll go back to the township that'll go back on the on the uh, ballot uh, next time the 911 yeah yeah that's a Jackson thing yeah. Jackson County for sure yeah uh, some new things in Napoleon you have a new restaurant I heard is really good we do it's called the crow's nest uh, it's fantastic uh, it's a breakfast lunch place cool um we need it we and we love the owners uh, yeah and they're they, they've been great to everybody and we've been great to them too and um yeah, it's fun having them they're right across the street them. from us too there's been a lot of uh, nice new development and construction over the last five or six years uh, especially on that m50 corridor some of the some of your uh long time businesses have invested and uh it's really it's made the area look a lot nicer especially that main main corridor there mm -hmm. yep uh, Aggies, yeah, you know, Aggies, put the new out, yeah. outdoor uh, patio, which is phenomenal. It looks great out yeah. there. And uh, we have an, another company called Sabersoft that just went in. It's a house washing company. I believe you're familiar with yep. those, with them yeah. that did your house. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So cool. uh, and th it's not built yet. The building is is almost ready, but cool. it's not done yet. And uh, of course, Kelly Fuels uh, making that big investment with the uh, hardware store in the plaza and yeah. uh, the galley and Kelly Express. And America's backyard, they keep moving. Are they uh, settled to where they are? Uh, their final yeah, spot? They, they found their, their, <laughs> their, their final resting place. Yeah. They're, they're there and they're great for our community also. Dan also is uh, one of our JTV sports commentators. You can catch him on Friday nights. Uh, mostly football, but we've snuck you into a basketball game. No, here. I haven't, but I think We're I will. We're going to I, this year. I think so. Okay, all right. Uh, Tell, tell us how you got uh, how you got started uh, calling games for JTV, and uh, you you like it, right? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I, it uh, I I was gonna say I'd do it for free, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are here. We would hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I was a high school football official for 19 years yeah. up, up in the Lansing area, and uh, Josh Burgett, a good friend of mine, yeah. he said, "Well, when you're done doing that." You know, why don't you try doing this? And I, I said, well, that, that'd be great. And so one thing led to another and and uh, been calling uh, JTV football games yeah. for, uh, the, I think, about four or five four years now. Four or five now. years for sure, yeah. So it's it's absolutely been a blast. Uh, um, what's really made it fun this year is I, I got to do four uh, Napoleon yeah. Pirate games yeah. who are 11-0 uh, and 0 right now, yes. which is fantastic. Uh, they're going to play uh, uh, St. Mary's in... Yep. in uh, Monroe. Monroe, Monroe, correct. Yeah. So, is it hard for you to stay neutral during the yes. Napoleon games? Yeah, I don't. I don't stay neutral. No, and no, Napoleon's fine. my place. That's right. That's awesome. <laughs> it's kind of uh, it's kind of crap that Napoleon has to go on the road with an undefeated season down to Monroe. Uh, it's horrible with a field. Decrepit oh. field and bleachers. And yeah. What I don't understand is that that Napoleon and Monroe both had the exact same amount of points. So was there a coin toss? No. Or? So what happened was the Cascades Conference came into play and uh, teams, the conference, the opponent's winning percentage came into play. So uh -huh. Monroe's opponents had a higher winning percentage than Napoleon's opponents. How about you go eleven and zero? You play, you play, uh, you play at home versus six and five team. That yeah, that something. Napoleon team, uh, you know, with uh, Gomez and uh, Humphreys and Baker and yeah. and that running back uh, Laritz. Yeah, amazing. I think he's got about eighteen hundred yards. Yeah, they're just a great fun team, to watch. So good luck to them this weekend. It, so if they win this weekend, I think, and Lumen Christie wins, I think they'll play each other they, they will they yeah. would. where would that game be I mean Jay if, high probably I would I would think why would you why would you make them uh, go anywhere other than Jackson high but you just don't know maybe Chelsea right. so we'll see hopefully they both win Dan Gallagher's our only uh, JTV sports commentator that 
tailgates as well as calls the games. Heck yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, right. that's a great, yeah. Do you know yeah. that, uh, <laughs> speaking of tailgating, Lumen Christie is inviting people to start tailgating at 4.30 because the Lawton folk are bringing a lot of people. So Lumen mm. Christie is inviting fans out there uh, very early to set up shop. So. Get your tickets early last yeah. week. They sold 3,000 tickets by wow. 10 a.m. Friday. Wow, Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, and thanks for coming in. Yeah, appreciate it. It was, yeah. it was a lot of fun. Thanks, Dan. You made it easy for me. <laughs> Napoleon Township Supervisor and JTV Sports Commentator, Dan Gallagher. More of the morning show after this.